You've got to be kidding me. This board, the Aesthetic Nomad in one, is crazy fast. Like, the power that this board has is unbelievable. And it's instant. I'm talking like zero to hair on fire as soon as you hit the wheel. It is, it's scary fast, I'll call it. It literally is like, it takes concentration man when you're in s plus to tame this beast so let's talk about it what's the deal what is this board for who's it for this board is for people that want to go fast i'm not gonna lie about it at all like this is i would not buy this board if you don't like faster riding even in the slower modes this board is really really quick but there's one major problem i'm seeing with it and anyone that thinks my reviews aren't honest listen up because I'm about to tell you what maybe other people aren't mentioning or maybe it's just me and my personal preference I'll let you be the judge so throughout the video you're gonna see two different rides that I did on this board one where it's completely stock and one where it's actually been modified and I'll explain what those modifications are so let's start with the deck the deck is very interesting it's, a, it's what first really drew me to this board it is a beautiful design uh, it's got a whole bunch of different layers of maple and bamboo but basically at, at, the, at the end of it all it's a wood deck it has no flex in it at all it's very stiff it's not a flexy deck it has really nice w concave and it's got actual like traditional concave as well it's, it's really really nice it's a drop down deck uh, it's got plenty of drop down and I feel like pretty locked in on it it's got a fantastic grip tape design uh, where they've got these cool little like laser cut um, ace deck, ace triangle, you know, Mercedes Benz type logos throughout it. They look really, really cool. I dig it. And the grip tape is super coarse. Like I grabbed the board, rolled it, you know, under my arm and it scratched me. It's like, it's, it's like almost like viscous. If you've ever ridden viscous, it's like similar to that. It's, it's awesome when you're riding it because your shoes are like glued to the thing because of the grip tape so i really dig that the deck has a split angle design this has been like the new thing that ace deck has been doing with multiple boards like if you just watched my x3 video uh, you notice i talked a lot about the split angle and split angle basically means that your angles of your kingpins are different in the front than they are in the rear and what you're trying to achieve by doing that is a more carvy front end and a more stable uh, or dead end uh, rear end so there's less steer going on in the rear and more steer going on in the front which i love i love split angle however with this board you have a 45 degree uh truck on each end so you're starting at 45 degrees then they did a plus eight so you brought it to a 53 in the front and a minus eight in the rear which brings you to 37 degrees so 37 in the rear 53 in the front so what that's supposed to do is give you more stability at speed. It's not something I'm feeling. When I first got the board, I took it out, you know, checked it over real quick, made sure everything kind of looked good, everything's like tight. I always recommend doing that from any manufacturer, just make sure all like your, your nuts and bolts look good and uh, you're about to trust your life on something, so make sure everything's good to go. Uh, I check my like bushing tightness usually to see like how tight or loose the bushings are. So got that stuff quickly like kind of dialed in, jumped on the board, started riding. Right when I hit about 26 or 27 miles an hour, I was getting like a shimmy. And I was like, this is weird. I talked to some other friends that have the board and they're like, yeah, I'm kind of getting that too. I think the wheels might be unbalanced. And I was like, okay. So I threw some uh, wheel weights in there and balance the tires and and that shimmy went away completely so i was like cool uh, these are tubeless tires which i'll get to but 
Uh, that took care of that. So I was like, right on. Still though, right about 27-ish miles an hour, 28 miles an hour, I started feeling like the, the beginning of a speed wobble. And I was like, man, this is not, this is not great. It's not a great feeling. And especially on a board that's like really, really powerful. So all that being said, what I ended up doing, and that's why I have modified footage and stock footage, is I ended up de-wedging the board. What that entails is using a wedged riser to either lower or raise your angle of your kingpin. So what I did was I de-wedged both. I, did, I have a five degree wedge that I used on each side. So I brought the front from a 53 down to a 48 and the rear from a 37 down to a 32. So now I'm at 32, 47, lots of numbers. Wait, is that right? No, 32, 48. You will need to drill a hole inside the wedged adapter if for the rear so that the charge port can clear. It's really easy to do. You could do it with like an X-Acto knife if you needed to, but if you have a larger drill bit, just drill one hole. The risers that I use, the wedged risers, are rubber, so you could just, it took me 10 seconds to just drill a little hole, and then that clears, and everything's like copacetic and working nice. And it's quite a bit better. Now, this is really personal preference, so I'm just being honest on like how I felt on the board, though. I didn't feel stable at all at like 30 miles an hour, which the top speed of the board on the seven inch tires that it comes with is 32 miles an hour and right about 27, I started feeling sketchy on it. I messed with the bushing tightness, um, I balanced the wheels, I did all those things and I just couldn't get to the point where I was like, wow, I feel really confident at a higher speed on the board. So I went ahead, pulled off the trucks, I put the wedged risers in. So if you wanna do this modification, you're gonna need the wedged risers, which are about $8 or so on Amazon, and you're gonna need longer bolts. Now you might not need to do this modification, but I felt like I did, so I went ahead and just changed it. That's just who I am, I'm not gonna just like ride, I'm gonna change things and tweak them, and, and that's okay. So once I did that, I felt like the board still was very carvy, and I felt like I got a lot more stability. So in my opinion, on this board, for the way I ride and, the, and how I feel on it, I think that there's too much degree in the front and too much degree in the rear. It's probably more the rear than it is the front. So I prefer a lower angle if you're gonna do a split angle like this uh, in the rear. I might also be able to solve this uh, feeling that I'm getting through bushings. So I'll let you be the judge though. You'll be able to see footage throughout. And to me, I think you can completely see that I'm riding much more timid when the board is completely stock. And when it was stock, I had the bushings very tight, trying to get rid of that feeling of, of speed wobble. And then when you see me with it de-wedged, I think I'm riding it a lot more confidently and feeling a lot more in tune with the board. The Nomad comes in three different configurations. You have a belt drive 14S 3P with P42A cells and a 60 amp ESC. So it's a little bit less power and it's belt drive. Then you can step up to the 90 amp ESC, the same 14S 3P P42A battery, but it's with gear drives. And then there's the tip top, which is what I have, which is the 14S 4P, so it's got a little bit more uh, battery in there. It's a 90 amp ESC and it's gear drive. If you go gear drive, you can't really run street wheels. If you go, I think they're gonna re release an adapter though, so eventually you'll probably be able to, but currently you can't run street wheels on it with the gear drives. And if you go uh, belt drive, you'll be able to run both, but you're gonna get a little bit less power out of the board. Probably not a bad thing though. This board has so much power. It's, it's wild. This is definitely the most powerful off the shelf kind of, you know, sub $2,000 board I've ever ridden for sure. So for range on the Nomad, they're saying you can get up to 34 miles. I'm sure you can. Range though is all over the place depending on where you live, how heavy you are, how you ride, the even like the road consistencies, the uh, tire pressure, all those things come into play, but they're saying up to 34 miles. The board has really nice TKP trucks. The gear drives sound amazing. As soon as you hit like that mid to high 20s, it starts having like a turbo sound that is just super, super cool. And I, I love the sound of it. I love the feeling of the gear drives. They're extremely smooth. Um, the power when it comes on, it's a, not jerky, it's just instant. 
there's kind of a difference to me of like a really jerky ESC and just because there's so much power, it's just, it's your acceleration, like your throttle curve is very quick. Uh, it is not an ease into it when you're in S plus, when you're in the fastest mode. Now, when you're in the mellower modes, it's a very manageable board. Uh, but when you're in the S plus, you, you need to be in tune and like paying attention. The trucks themselves, I really like. I like the Ace Deck TKPs a ton. Uh, they give you nice cup washers, they give, which give you more stability. And they have a, a nice mix of bushings on here for you. Um, you know, always open to just swapping over to like some riptides or some venom bushings. I think those are nice upgrades, especially because it's hard for a manufacturer to know like what the weight of the rider is going to be and the style of the rider and stuff. So you might want to swap out your bushings. The wheels on this are beautiful. They're machined CNC'd wheels and you have Astex new tire that they actually collabed with Hoda. And this tire is super cool. It's called the vacuum tire. I don't know why they called it that, uh, but it can be run tubeless when it's on the hub. So it's actual tubeless tire, which is pretty cool. And it can run all the way down to zero PSI, which is crazy. The shape of the tire will actually change depending on how much pressure you put in. So if you go zero to like 12, you have a very flat profile. And as you go up, it becomes more rounded. Um, a flatter profile usually gives you a little more grip, but it reduces your range typically uh, and a more kind of peaked or rounded shape will give you more like less rolling resistance, which also means a little less grip though. So it just depends on what you're doing with the board at that moment. If you're going on a really long ride and you want a little more range, I'd go with like a higher uh, PSI. But if you're going with like a track day and you want to whip this thing around a track and get the ultimate grip you can, drop that tire pressure a little bit and you're going to square off that profile, that tire, which is awesome. Like they are pushing the envelope when it comes to tires. And I love to see that. And with them on the board, you're able to achieve a 32 mile an hour top speed. If you put eight inch tires on, the board will get you up to 37 miles an hour. So what do you get in the box? You get the board itself. You gotta put the wheels on when it comes, which is super easy. You can use the T tool to put those on. It comes with the T tool. Also comes with the charger, obviously, for the board itself. It comes with the remote and the charging cord for that. An extra bag of bolts, which I love that they do. It also comes with a couple Allen wrenches to be able to work on the board. It also comes with these really big stickers, which are, I don't know, yeah. The Nomad also has the top charging port. I love this about Ace Deck. They put the charge port in the top like plate of where your truck is. It's got the rubber opening now that is much easier to open and close than the old generation one. So no problems there. Flip it open, charge your board. You don't have to turn it upside down. The power button is underneath the board at the rear. Uh, you tap that to turn on the board. Now, if the board's been turned on in the last 24 hours, you can turn the board on and off from the remote. So once you tap it once, you can go on your ride. Let's say you stop, you turn off the board by just turning off the remote, it turns off everything, and then you're ready to go again. You just turn on your remote, the board will turn on and you're off and running. The enclosure is really sleek on this board. It's a carbon fiber enclosure and it has integrated lights in it. There's a long light on the side that lights up blue and when you break on the board, it actually starts blinking and then there's some lights in the front that are white uh, now these lights are all for like to see you, not to see with, meaning they're not gonna light up the path and stuff. You're still gonna need either a flashlight in your hand or, or something like that or a headlamp uh, to light up your way, which having lights really down low usually don't go as far down your path anyways. You kinda wanna light up higher to get the light to go further. Um, but these are really cool additions that the board has. The remote is the standard Ace Deck remote that they've been using, works fine. Not the most ergonomic one in the whole world. I'd like to see, cause I like the Ace Deck is trying to like push the envelope in all these other areas. I'd love to see them design a fresh remote that's like very molded to your hand or something. That would be pretty cool to see. So now let's keep it real. I kind of been doing that the whole time uh, in this review for sure but the board's fantastic. It looks great, it feels great while you're riding. I love the feel of the deck underneath my feet. The power is insanely powerful, um, and I, I really dig all of the fit and finish. There's tons of CNC work on it. The heat sink is CNC'd. So many components of this board are just really, really thoughtful. Uh, a couple little tweaks, and I think you can make it really dialed in. If Ace Deck makes another Nomad, which they probably will next year, I would recommend reducing the angles of the deck, especially the rear. I would drop that rear down to like a 
30 degree or something like make that thing like super super stable and then make the keep the front at 53 if you want and but make it so that that board is just rock solid stable at a really high speed ace deck could also come out with new base plates for their trucks that you could adjust to so if i wanted a let's say a 30 degree rear, they could release a new base plate and I could buy just that CNC base plate and change it and then I have a whole different feeling board. In the same way that I'm using the wedges um, because one of the cons of using the wedges is it is gonna raise my board up a little bit, not a ton, but it's gonna raise it up. Whereas using a different base plate won't change the height as much. So there it is, the, my honest review of the Ace Deck Nomad in one fantastic board. If you guys have any questions or comments, drop them down below. I'd be happy to answer them and I'll see you guys on the next ride.